Hey everyone, I'm Jack Keeper, and I've been creating products online and dabbling in various markets since 2005. Some of my previous products over the years have included desktop applications. And today, I'm going to do a tutorial on creating a desktop application that can run on Windows, Mac OS, Linux, and even more, believe it or not. This will be broken down into easy to digest parts, and I'll try to post each section every day. So today we're going to create an image grabber desktop application in Free Pascal using a fantastic IDE called Code Typhon Studio. Code Typhon is a fork of one of my all around favorite IDEs, Lazarus. So I thought instead of doing one of your everyday run of the mill hello world apps, I'm going to let you watch over my shoulder while I make a picture scraper app where you can grab images off a website. And this will give you a nice foundation to get you up and running, building your own powerful apps in either Code Typhon or Lazarus. Now after that, you'll be able to easily use your own twist to apply these same techniques for grabbing info from other sites, like images, links, weather stats, and so on. Really, the sky's the limit. And a scraper is just one of a gazillion different types of apps that you can create. Oh, and the coolest part, Code Typhon Studio, just like Lazarus, is freeware. Yeah, it's open source. There's no legal BS to worry about. And if you decide to sell your unique little masterpiece, you're covered. So how cool is that? Now, even if you don't know a thing about Pascal or Delphi, you can still follow my tutorial and create this app while immersing yourself in the free Pascal language to boot. You know, it does help to have a basic understanding of some programming language and it really doesn't matter which because once you have one language under your belt, it's pretty easy, pretty easy to cross over to other programming languages. So like you might be asking yourself, if Code Typhon Studio is a fork of Lazarus IDE, then what is Lazarus? And what's the difference with Code Typhon? Well, Lazarus is a Delphi compatible cross-platform IDE for rapid application development using Free Pascal and you have the freedom to create open source and commercial applications, uh, kind of like what I was saying before. Now the thing I've always loved about Lazarus is that you can quickly and easily create powerful apps that can work on multiple platforms instead of just being like Windows only. And despite what you might hear from the fanboys of the latest cool language of the month club, Free Pascal is alive and well. The Lazarus community, it's a thriving and friendly group supporting each other and the projects are very active with regular updates on their IDE. Also, if you are already a Lazarus user, you can easily convert your projects into Code Typhon simply by using the Code Typhon Center, which is a cool little utility that comes with it. Now, where Code Typhon is different is that it's a complete done-for-you setup which automatically installs every component you'll probably ever need and has a huge selection of project templates that you can use. Everything just seems to work right out of the box. And on top of that, it's already set up for cross compiling of your apps to other platforms. Now that's pretty cool. In case you don't know what cross compiling means, that means that you can compile your app, build it from within your IDE, for a different platform. For example, I use OpenSUSE Linux desktop. So from my Linux machine, I can create a Windows application and compile it right there without having to use like a virtual box or to go onto a Windows machine to make it. I think that's really awesome. In Lazarus, you need to set up these other features separately and add additional components as you need them, which is not necessarily a bad thing, but if you wanted to cross compile your apps as well, well, you'd have to get it configured, which isn't that easy without a third party utility. You can also install Code Typhon as a small IDE by choosing option six, which you'll see in the future, to have just the basics. And then you can easily add on as you go from within the main menu under packages, install, uninstall packages. And in there you can select individually or use the easy buttons for pre-configured minimum, medium, or big IDE package setup. Now Code Typhon is based on the trunk version of Lazarus, which has the latest cutting edge features available 
while still maintaining stability for reliable development. And just like Lazarus, Code Typhon has a ton of components available that you can simply drag and drop onto the form designer effortlessly to create complex graphical user interfaces, or GUIs for short. Now the big IDE install has nearly all the components and widgets turned on by default, which is a lot of controls, like I think about 160, give or take. That's way more than the default stock controls that you typically find in Lazarus or the small IDE install of Code Typhon. So with the Code Typhon big IDE install, the default stock controls are in the first nine tabs of the control toolbar, which I'll show you later. Oh, and just real quick, if you make closed source commercial apps and use some of those extra controls, those more obscure fancy smancy widgets in your GUI, I would just double check the licensing just to make sure you're all good there. The stock components for Lazarus, which Code Typhon also uses, are solidly commercial friendly. And I'm pretty sure the extra components would be freeware as well, but it doesn't hurt to take a few minutes and verify. And yeah, you can call me paranoid, but just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that someone's not out to get you, right? Okay, so anyway, when you build and run your apps, it compiles lightning fast native code just for your OS. And what's really cool is you can cross compile your apps to other platforms, like I was saying before. So if I built the app, say on a Mac with OS 10 Catalina and then cross compiled it for Windows and ran it on Windows, it would look like a Windows app because, well, it is a Windows app. It's not gonna look out of place by having, say, Mac style widgets just because I used a Mac to build it. And again, like I use OpenSUSE Linux with Plasma Desktop as my OS, but I can easily compile a Windows executable right from my Linux desktop. I don't need to jump into a virtual machine or onto a Windows box just to build my application. I would only use those to test instead which is very cool. Now, to me, I just love the fact that I don't have to set up a complete development environment on each and every platform just to compile an executable. To me, that's like a real drag, you know, a lot of unnecessary time. And by the way, the cross compiling your app is not really a requirement for this tutorial. You don't have to do it, it doesn't matter. And if you already use Lazarus and you wanna stick with it, you'll be just fine. The overall toolbar layout, of course, is slightly different in Code Typhon from Lazarus, but not enough to make a difference. So anyways, this first video is gonna cover installing and setting up Code Typhon. So let's go grab Code Typhon over at pilotlogic.com, and I left the links in the description below. So let's pop out there and get it, shall we? Okay, so let's go ahead and download this. So we're gonna go ahead and save this file. It's about 800 and some megs. So I'm going to go ahead and download this and we're going to go ahead and pause the video. All right, so we got it downloaded. I'm going to go ahead and extract this into a folder, which is my downloads folder. There we go. Okay, so now we got a code Typhonus folder and let's go inside here and we have our install.sh and install bat. Being a Linux user I'm going to use the install.sh but for Windows you would use the install.bat obviously. So let me open my console window and I'm just going to change directory here into my download slash code type on ins for install. Okay so now I'm going to go ahead and run my install.sh and we got a little menu here and first we want to select to install Code Typhon Studio, which is option zero. So let's go ahead and do that. And it'll kind of do its thing here. And it's going to kind of install all the setup files so we can get started. Okay, now our menu has changed a little bit and we want to continue on again with option zero, install system libraries. This will let us install all the dependencies that you may need for running your IDE. And this just takes usually a couple minutes. And again, I'm going to just skip through this quick. Okay. Now we got past that step. The final step is to choose option eight, remove and build all. And this will take a little bit, you know, probably uh, 10 to 15 minutes, possibly. So let's do this. Cool. 
roughly 15.1673 minutes later. I couldn't resist. Okay, so everything's installed now. So we're going to go ahead and launch this baby. So I'm just going to go in my menu. And here we go, our Typhon 64. So this is going to go ahead and launch Typhon Studio. And as you can see, similar to Lazarus, it is all kind of broken up. And I don't really like that kind of style. To me, that's just kind of cluttered. So I'm going to go ahead and dock that all by hitting settings and go down to restore default layout, all docked. And now we're all docked. Um, but for some reason, my designer disappeared. So I'm just going to go ahead and relaunch that. That's just something you got to do when you enable that for some reason. So let's launch it again. And there we go. Got our solid environment. Okay. Now, first thing I want to go into my options under settings. And I just kind of want to show you our themes. So if I go to under display and colors, you can see that by default, we're using Twilight. And these are all the different kinds of themes you can use for your look in your editor. Ocean, you know, default. Uh, that one's kind of cool, Dark Wolf. And so you, you get some more default themes than you do like with the standard Lazarus install. But I have my own theme that I created. And so I'm going to go ahead and put that in. And by the way, I'm sharing this, so it's in the description down below. You can go ahead and use it if you like as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this XML file and I'm going to put it into my Code Typhon folder. Um, and so that would be in my home. And there's a folder here called User Schemes. And I'm just going to paste it. And if you're a Windows user, it's probably under users slash your name slash um, probably roaming or local. Uh, but I'm not really sure. You may have to refer to the docs on that. So let's go ahead and go back into Code Typhon. Okay, and we'll go back up to Settings, Options, and Display Colors. Let's look under here again, and there it is, Jack's Custom. Ah, much better. Yes. So that's just kind of my taste. You know, but anyways, that's how you will set that. And I'm just beefing up the font here a little bit to make it a little easier to see since we're running a video. And so there we go. That looks better. And this is our form designer. And just to give you a quick tour here of the form designer, I'm just going to stick in a edit and a button. And we're going to take this field and I'm just going to stretch that out a little bit. And, uh, Maybe I'll remove the, well, first of all, let's set the anchor. I'm going to go ahead and center that to the form to the left from the left margin. That'll kind of keep everything centered. So across your different resolutions, it'll look even. All right. Now let's just um, take that edit one out of the box there. Just clear that. That's better. Okay. Now I'm going to click this button and I'm going to add a click event to it. I just want to show you how easy it is to do something like add a click event. First, um, let me change the caption here. Press me. That's pretty original. And I'll hit the auto size. That just kind of makes it more standard. Okay. So all I did there was just double click. And it created the click event for me in the source editor. And it took me there automatically too. So that's cool. I'm just going to make a show message box here. And tie it to the edit one dot. See how that kind of delayed there? Yeah, that's kind of slow. You know, I'm going to fix that too. So I'm going to go back up under settings, options. I want that to be quicker. So we'll just go under completion and hints, which is under mouse. And this delay for the completion box, I'm going to bring that all the way down to 10 milliseconds. Hit OK. And let's see how responsive it is now. Yes, that's a lot more snappy. I like that. Okay, so that's how you do that if you don't like that delay, which I don't. So let's hit text there. Now, let's see if we go ahead and launch this. So we'll just hit this play button here. This one is the one with debugging. Uh, you see two play buttons. And there's our form. And let's type something in the edit field. Hi there. Hit press, and there it is. 
So that's how easy it is to attach an event. So that's just a little sample of our designer. Just kind of thought I'd throw that in. Uh, oh, and one thing I forgot. Uh, in case you notice the font looks kind of thin and you know not real crisp or maybe too crisp, let's go to settings and options. And back under display, you see here, disable anti-aliasing. You can uncheck that and it'll smoothen out your fonts. Uh, that's not the case on every machine, but I've noticed that on some PCs, uh, you can see that. So that will smoothen out your font and make it look better uh, on some machines, you know. Uh, other machines, it's not really an issue. I don't really know why, but just thought I'd share that. Okay, and that should cover it. In our next video, we're going to get started on the pick grabber. So we'll see you then.